Well, good morning. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, audio problems we were having there. Finally got online and figured out what's going on. Uh, just want to remind you there is a recording of this event underway, and I, uh, the, the link to the recording will be sent out within a few days to all those who registered for the event, not just the attendees. In case you're ever not able to make the meeting, you can always go back later and view it. We are going to be presenting these monthly on international approvals. Uh, the chat and QA comments, uh, if you have a question, the best place to put it is a, uh, the Q&A uh, area. And uh, there's also a chat function if you've got something other than a question uh, on the topic in hand. And uh, also want to make sure that uh, you uh, have uh, references of uh, materials. So I've provided some of that during the uh, presentation today. So I'm going to get into it uh, since I've uh, killed about the first five minutes of the time here. We we'll want to, uh, this is a synopsis of what it's about. We're going to be talking about, you know, these agencies in Africa. And uh, also want to uh, give some credit here. All the maps, flag artwork, and uh, country demographic uh, information courtesy of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency from their website, the World Factbook. This is a very good source of information, not uh, for compliance or, uh, you know, as far as standards and testing goes, but from the stand of uh, import, export, uh, uh, finding out the contacts, the government contacts. And uh, this uh, information is public domain as long as you get the uh, CIA World Factbook credit, and that's what I'm doing right there. So we're going to talk a little bit about Africa first and then about the market country requirements, also the challenges and opportunities in this uh, continent. Uh, so it's the world's largest continent. Uh, currently, I believe it's 51 countries. So there's been change recently with uh, over the past five years. Sudan uh, split into two countries with South Sudan. And uh, Western Africa, West Africa refers to the region of the uh, African continent. I'll be talking about uh, the main order of both these countries is from top to bottom, left to right. Um, and uh, so we can get through all of them. And then South Africa is a country. So I've been using the terms, you know, Southern Africa, Western Africa to. Uh, and you also see going through here, there are. Uh, There are a lot of uh, names that are similar in these countries, so make sure that you're uh, keeping track of those as well. One thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is uh, uh, over the past few years, I finally became aware. I've always heard the Mercator projection map was distorted. And if you look at the Mercator map, uh, you'll notice there North America looks like it's got about the same land size as Africa. Uh, you know, uh, South America looks like maybe two thirds of the side. Greenland looks bigger than South America. And I always heard about these distortions in there, but I didn't really realize until I started, I ran across a couple of different maps recently you know, over the past couple of years. This one's called the Orthograph Map. It was made by a Japanese architect in uh, 1999. And um, as you go across here, you'll notice on the left how large this continent is. Um, you know, compared to North America and South America, and it still has uh, a few distortions in it, but it's a lot closer. You notice Greenland up here towards the middle and brown at the top is much, much smaller uh, than, uh, you know, South America or any of the other continents. And uh, you also, with this map, have Antarctica at the bottom, which is, isn't any use to us for compliance, but uh, it, it does kind of give it the relative size. Uh, the one I like the best is called the Pierce uh, Quincy uh, uh projection map. And uh, the only thing that's distorted in this map is the oceans. You'll notice these lines out here at the four corners they've got drawn there. And this gives a lot more accurate. You look at Africa, and there you can see its true size. It truly is the largest land mass as far as the continents go. And uh, North America uh, would probably fit inside the Africa about three times if you look at the relative size. And it gives you a little bit more. It also shows you how close we actually are to, uh, to our neighbors to the north and uh, Russia and, and some of the uh, polar regions around there, all are, and then also the Nordic countries of uh, Europe. So this is one I like to reference with give you a kind of a better idea of what the true size is. And these are better maps. You notice it does have uh, 
uh, Antarctica in the four quarters. There are other views which show uh, move these around, uh, but basically this is the most common projection you'll see. So in Africa, there are some challenges. Uh, there's many developing economies. There's some that have been uh, like South Africa and uh, Egypt that are uh, fairly stable and have a really good uh, compliance system in place. And uh, South Africa actually has uh, uh, EMC and product safety requirements, and then uh, Africa, and then Egypt, and a couple other countries do have product safety requirements. For the most part, you're just going to be running into wireless and telecom regulations. They're worried about their spectrum, like most countries are. Want to make sure that you're not interfering with any of their uh, channels or frequency spectrum that they've set aside for military or emergency use, such as police or firemen. Some of these countries are really rich, some are really poor, and so uh, these are good markets to get into and uh, large base potential customers. And uh, if you've noticed, the, the Chinese uh, 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 government has really been pushing development in these countries in Africa with uh, large uh, irrigation projects and power generating projects, road development, things like that, because they're looking at it in 50 years, they think this is going to be the hugest mar uh, the largest market uh, possibly in the world of all these combined countries as they continue on the path to economic development and more stable governments. But it is going to require patience. It's not something you're going to see overnight in some countries. So. Uh, in addition to the, the normal information I'm uh, providing, I'm also putting some economic terms in here, especially if you're a smaller company and you're trying to make a decision, maybe you don't have a full-time staff on this. Um, the one thing I will talk about, uh, you'll see the term local representative or local rep. This means a person in that country that we're talking about who's authorized to represent your company via registered letter of authorization or whatever the method is for that country. This, uh, if you have a, a company office there, the preferred method is to have some employee from that office act as a representative. It's just somebody for the government agency to go to if there's ever an issue with importing your project, uh, your products, or if there's any kind of interference issues or anything else they have to take care of. GDP PPP is an economic indicator of the gross domestic product on a purchasing power parity basis. So this kind of equalizes things because it's based on a per capita view of it. Uh, so, you know, like in China, it's the world's largest population. You expect it to have one of the world's largest GDPs, and it, it does. Uh, but to kind of compare it to uh, all countries in Africa, we're looking at that. We're also looking at the world population ranking, and that's, uh, you know, based on uh, one's you know the most populous was with China, and uh, number two thirty seven is least populated of the Pitcairn Islands at fifty four people. So there's a wide range there, but I'm kind of giving both these figures, and you can use these two this GDP number and this WPR the population rank in comparison. If they're kind of in the same range, like if one's uh, GDP is at a hundred and the population is a hundred, that's kind of saying that they're where that you would expect them to be. However, if the GDP is real high, population low, that shows a country with a lot of output. Uh, one of the uh, best examples is, is Singapore, and uh, uh, the converse is true too. If they have like the 50th largest population, but the 150th uh, as far as GDP, that shows they're a poor country uh, in comparison to the others in the world. And so these are things to be looking at when you're deciding which markets to enter. Uh, starting with Algeria, so you see up in the top the uh, left side, I've got the GDP PPP and the WPR number for the population, and that's just the world population ranking uh, from one to uh, 230 something. That, uh, and this is all from the CIA website where they have their population estimates, information on the economy. They also have information on the development of the telecom and mobile phones and things like that, which is a lot of good information. At the end of this presentation, which you'll be receiving, I have the URL web links uh, to, the, to that site and others that are helpful. So in Algeria, they have uh, your option of a French or Arabic website. If you don't speak either one, it's going to kind of be a problem. But Google Translate has gotten better over the years, so that can kind of give you the gist of what they're talking about, but you can't rely on that for an official translation. So this is a country where it's uh, uh, good to have a uh, local representative uh, to work with you, and they, that is a requirement. You have to have a local rep in country. There are agents will serve as this function uh, that you can align with. It's best to get references before you go with somebody like that. Uh, this is kind of true for any of the countries we're talking about today. So the telecom authority is the authority for the regulation of posts and telecommunications. Um, and uh, they w uh, do require test samples and product labels. And as you see, we'll go through today. Some do, some don't. 
Uh, they accept uh, FCC or EUCE uh, reports and documents for proof of compliance. They will want the reports to be able to check the specific frequencies. And uh, you'll see most of the required submittal documents are the same. The only difference between most of these countries is uh, some uh, will accept only FCC, some will accept only EU, uh, CE, and others will accept both. And there's some like South Africa that, that, that require their own test documents. Like uh, for EMC and product safety, they require the SOBS documents, uh, South Africa Bureau of Standards. And uh, when we get to South Africa, we see the wireless telecom agency too, and they require their own test reports. Uh, these will take about eight to ten weeks uh, for approval uh, once everything's been submitted and the certificates are good for two years. And it's pretty much everything wireless as you know, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, you know, any kind of telephone terminal equipment is going to fall under these requirements. Egypt is, uh, you see from that population number 14, 14th largest population in the world, so they are a good market for a lot of companies. GDP is 22, a little bit lower than you expect, but they have had a lot of political strife and uh, issues over the past few years, if you notice, with the uh, Arab Spring and uh, kind of uh, driving from that, that uh, they're working on getting their economy back up to full steam. Uh, they have a English language level, uh, uh, English language version of their website at uh, www.tra.gov.eg, and I'll mention this at the end, but also EG is uh, it's real important when you're looking at this and doing your own research. Make sure that you're looking at the right country. Uh, and sometimes agencies that do these approvals will kind of make it look like an official of the government account. But the gov.eg, EG is the the uh, domain name for Egypt. So and there's a list of them. You can just Google it. You know, uh, uh, country domain names. Um, and it'll come up with a, a list of these, uh, so you can make sure you're looking at the right country. They don't require local uh, rep or product labels for as a condition, but they uh, don't require testing except for telecom products. These are TTE, the hardwired telephone products. Uh, they want to make sure it's not going to interfere with their telephone exchange, and everything's going to uh, work good from that. As you know, there have been some political unrest lately, and so if you see that in the news, you can know that maybe the compliance approvals aren't at the top of the government's uh, priority list at that time. So uh, uh, plan accordingly for that. Maybe we're plan a lot of extra time. Uh, Libya, and we'll talk about uh, some of this. So there's this U.S. And, uh, embargoes that we have to look at. If you're a U.S.-based company, this will apply to you have to make sure that you're in compliance for import and export uh, reasons and keep yourself out of legal trouble. There's a treasury.gov uh, website. has a lot of resources there. There's also the U.S. Commerce Department has some resources, but I'm just providing links. Uh, here is to the list of the countries that currently have sanctions in place. And uh, when it says U.S. embargoed, embargo targeted parties in country, that doesn't mean you can't ship your products. That means there's a specific list of people. So in, in Libya, people associated with the uh, previous Gaddafi regime, and uh, they want to control those dual-use exports. And this applies to a lot of computer equipment that could be used for military anything. The dual use is something that could have military use and a civilian use. So even if you say it's only intended for, you know, consumer electronics, but if it could be adapted to military application, then that's not going to be allowed there. So you want to make sure uh, with whatever department or individual is responsible as a country, they're making sure that you got get your products going to the right place to the right people, and you're able to track those accordingly. So they have a uh, new name for their telecom authority uh, since their government changed the general authority. And it uh, changed some from the uh, previous, uh, I think it was a ministry, previous ministerial authority was the name previously. Same uh, domain uh, name for the, uh, the website uh, is in Arabic. Uh, you do require a very local rep, so you'll probably want to get one that can speak English and uh, be able to uh, translate for you. Test samples labels not required. They will accept these. Uh, documents for proof of compliance and uh, uh, like the you know radio equipment director reports as proof of compliance. And as, as with some other countries in the northern Africa, uh, government 
bureaucracy is not always consistent. We work in delays are common. Morocco is another one on the uh, northwest. And these little maps up here, the green part is the country, so you can get a relative idea where it's located and uh, where you'd have to be to get your products there. The uh, website is in English, and uh, they require local representative and label samples. Uh, they don't require test samples, except either the FCC or EU reports and docs and basically anything wireless. Their certs are good for 10 years as long as the product chain. In any of these uh, validity, that means how long the cert is good for. If you're still placing on the market, and that means without changes. So if you change some of the frequencies of the power output, you got to go back for a uh, resubmittal. Tunisia in Northern Africa is uh, has a Center for Studies and Research of Telecommunications, or CERT. They have a French language website. Uh, Google Translate does a pretty good job with French. They do require local rep and test samples, don't require labels. And uh, approval time, most, like most agencies, you'll find it's around six to eight weeks. These certs are good for three years. That's common, usually one, two, or three years is the most common period. Uh, and that means that, for example, in Tunisia, if you're still placing that product on the market after three years, you've got to go in and get, get an updated certificate. Sometimes that will require new test reports or, uh, or new test samples. Other times, they'll just, if there's no changes, uh, they'll just uh, review it and, and issue the certificate. Sudan has had a lot of uh, conflict, and this is a one that is a U.S. embargo country. And when I say that, it means a uh, pretty much a total embargo. They'll allow some humanitarian aid, such as food and clothing, but anything else is probably not going to be allowed to be shipped there. So it's controls over dual-use exports and pretty much anything that could have any kind of military application. So this isn't just targeted people. This is for everybody. So you want to make sure you stay in line there. That's why there's no, you know, you notice there's no advice given here because as a U.S.-based company ourselves, we're not allowed to give any uh, advice or uh, information on how to import your products to a country that has a U.S. embargo in place. There's also this other site down here, you'll notice, U.S. Department of Commerce, as I mentioned previously, has the Bureau of Industry and Security, and they'll have some information, too, on what products are controlled. When it says dual use, you can go and see exactly what that means and see if it applies to your products. South Sudan is, uh, as I mentioned, is a country that came into place, and we'll notice up here the, the population ranking is 73, but the GD. P is down at 145, showing they're, they're kind of struggling, but this is a new country. They're coming out, uh, detached themselves from Sudan because they wanted to get out of the constant cycle of civil war and uh, strife that was going on there, and uh, they are working to increase that. So this is a new agency, the National Communications Authority, and the official name is Republic of South Sudan. And uh, there's a website linked to it. Uh, this is one exception. I told you that domain names. Uh, this is su such a new country, it hasn't made it into the, uh, the registry of uh, country domain names yet. So they're using uh, NCA-SS in you know, the org uh, domain uh, to show for their uh, agency, since there isn't a, an official South Sudan uh, domain name available. They do require local rep and test samples. They don't require samples of the labels. And they'll accept either FCC or EU reports and docs. And uh, approval uh, time, lead time validity, according to the website, six to 10 weeks, and they're good for three years. I haven't uh, overseen any uh, uh, submittals to this agency yet. I haven't had any country, uh, companies request that yet. So it will be something you'll probably want to allow some extra time on since this is new. Benin is uh, located on the western side of Africa, uh, and the coast is to its uh, south. And they have the Authority for Regulations for Electronic Communication and Post, and they have a French language website. They do require a local rep, but aren't going to ask you for test samples or labels. They're going to accept you those FCC or EU reports. Their search are good for five years, and it takes about six to eight weeks after they've received all the information. A lot of people use their local representative to drop these off personally at the uh, 
agency to make sure it's not lost in the shuffle and they get a receipt for turning it in, things like that. So that's also a good practice. If you've got that local rep, they're probably in the capital where the uh, agency is and make use of those connections. Burkino Faso was in Western Africa and uh, they've got a French language website, do require a local rep, and but don't require any kind of samples of the product or labels. And they'll accept uh, both FCC and CE. They don't have expiry dates, but it's the same uh, caveat that if the product changes, you've got to resubmit uh, for, to make sure it's still approved. Uh, if you change anything to the you know frequency or uh, spectrum that you're using or the power levels or anything else, uh, such modulation that might cause interference or uh, anything that might allow interference from other products. Uh, Cabo Verde, also uh, previously known as Cape Verde, is the English translation of it, but uh, their official language is French, and this is a French uh, name, Cabo Verde. Uh, the Green Cape basically is what it translates to. But uh, so island nation, if you notice on this uh, map here, there's a little square block. That's not the size, uh, the actual shape of the country. Within that square block are a bunch of islands. And uh, you'll notice this is, uh, has one of the world's smaller populations, uh, 173. And their GDP is in line with that, but uh, it's probably not one of the first countries you go to in Africa if you were introducing your products worldwide. This uh, uh, logo for the agency, they're just celebrating this year their 10th anniversary of the agency, came into being in 2007. And this is also a voluntary marketing requirement. Now, uh, most people read that as, well, I don't have to do it. And that is true. But uh, a lot of times government agencies will require this. Uh, large corporations will require it. They just want to know that the product is going to be compliant and uh, not cause interference. Uh, they don't require local rep test samples or labels. So it's a, a, a pretty uh, simple process, just paperwork. Uh, you're going to give the uh, reports to them. They're going to examine them. And this one has no expiry date as long as the product doesn't change. Uh, the Ivory Coast, uh, Cote d'Ivory, is in Western Africa, and uh, this agency has been around for a while. They have a French language website. Uh, the ones that have French are usually French as official language. Local rep test samples are required, labels are not, and they're going to accept either your FCC or EU reports. The shirts are good for five years, and it takes about six to ten weeks once the agency has received all the documentation. The Gambia, this is their official name. Uh, it just had a previous Gambia. I don't know if even the CIA website had uh, uh, upgraded it uh, or uh, corrected it to their, their official name, the Gambia. Uh, English language website, and uh, that's their official language. And the Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure is the agency over the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, which actually introduced itself. And this is where we mentioned non functioning. On their website, this is a common problem in Africa and some other countries that don't uh, have a lot of, uh, you know, high level of infrastructure built in for the internet or when they're having uh, a civil strife or military actions going on. Uh, you'll see several of these I've noticed. I go and check these out before each presentation. But uh, keep this on record. At some point, it should come back up, or if it doesn't, uh, if you're looking for a country, uh, if you put uh, like Gambia Telecom Authority, just tack uh, Telecom Authority onto the end of any country name, and you'll get some links that'll probably get you to the agency in case it's changed or uh, if you're trying to find it. Uh, they do require local rep and test samples, and uh, about six to eight week uh, approval time, and with no expiry date. Again, that's as long as the product doesn't change. Uh, Ghana is uh, also in West Africa, and they have the National Communication Authority. Website is in English. Don't require local rep or label samples or test samples. So uh, it's just a paperwork exercise, either the FCC or EU reports. And uh, about six to eight weeks uh, approval time once the agency receives everything that they've requested. And uh, no expiry date. The Guinea Republic in Western Africa also, and uh, they have a French language website. They do require local rep and test samples, but uh, they don't require label samples to accept either the FCC or EU, and uh, the certs are good for five years.
Guinea Bissau, and this is, you know, as you've seen previously, this, a, a, sorry about that, a Guinea. Uh, so there are a lot of similar names. You want to make sure you're looking at the right one. That's another reason I include the flag of the country, because that can help you make sure you're at the right place also. When you're looking at the government agency website, they'll generally have the flag somewhere on the home page. Their uh, uh, agency website is in Portuguese, and if you know your history, you know there was a lot of colonization uh, in previous centuries by English, French, and Portuguese. So that, those are generally the three languages you run into. Uh, the other most common is Arabic, uh, especially in the areas near the Middle East. Local rest required there. They don't require test samples or labels, and uh, they'll. Uh, you know, the FCC or CE label markings is what uh, they'll accept. And they'll uh, take the reports from either FCC or EU. Uh, the typical six to eight week approval times, like most agencies, no expiry date on their certs as long as the product doesn't change. Liberia is in Western Africa. If you know the history of that, it was. Uh, uh, there was help in founding from the United States. That's one of the reasons their official language is English. They do require local reps. Test samples are not required, and they accept FCC or CE labels as uh, acceptable marks for showing compliance. And they they want you to submit the reports, the FCC or CE, and there's no expiry date on these certs with a typical six to eight week approval time. Mali is in the middle of Western Africa, and uh, Regulatory Authority for Telecom IT and Post is a French language website and uh, voluntary marketing requirement. Once again, that's you know your government agencies that buy uh, uh, IT products may want it. Uh, large corporations, for you know if there's a uh, IBM branch there, they may want it. Uh, so that's that's when the voluntary. Um, but you could call that a customer requirement. So if a customer requires it, you may want to go get it. But uh, they do require a local rep and test sample, and labels are not required if you are going to submit. Certs are good for five years. Mauritania is in Western Africa also, and they have a French language website. Local reps and labels are required. They'll accept both FCC and REU reports as proof of compliance. And pretty much anything wireless or communication uh, or communicates voice or information is going to be regulated. Niger is uh, kind of in the middle of Western Africa, with the border with uh, Central Africa and area, and uh, they have an authority for regulation of telecom and post. Their website's in French. Local reps aren't required. They don't require any kind of uh, samples of uh, labels or products. FCC and EU are both acceptable reports for them. And a typical six to eight week approval time, no expiry date on the certs as long as the product doesn't change. Nigeria has two agencies you have to deal with, and so that makes it a little bit different. You notice that uh, population ranking there, number seven, this is the largest populated country largest population in an African country. So a lot of countries, uh, would be one of the first uh, countries a lot of uh, companies will go into, uh, others being. Uh, typically the, the main four I see uh, because of their consumer market size is uh, South Africa, Egypt, um, Kenya, and uh, Nigeria. Those are good four to start with. I've got English language websites. And uh, the Nigerian Communications Commission is the uh, telecom authority, but they also have the Standards Organization of Nigeria with the conformity assessment program. So you've got to have both these uh, certifications. Uh, and they'll accept EU, uh, you know, red reports as proof of compliance. And uh, uh, those will, uh, about a 12 week uh, approval cycle. Uh, and then uh, there's no expiry date on that cert. And both these, and you notice this note down here, both of those certifications have to be obtained to legally import your product. Senegal is probably westernmost uh, country on the uh, uh, continent itself. Authority for Telecom and Post, it's French language. Local rep is required, but no samples are required. They'll accept both FCC or EU, either one, your choice, and uh, there's no expiry date in the certs. Sierra Leone is uh, Western Africa. 
National Telecommunications Commission. Uh, is a, uh, their acronym is NATCOM. They have an English language website. Some good information there. Uh, you know, and also in these slides, I don't know if I mentioned, this is the agency logo that I've included here, so you'll know you're at the right place also. If you want to go out and look at these sites on your own. Local rep labels not required. Neither are test samples. They'll accept either FCC or EU. And a uh, typical 68 week approval time with no expiry date on the certs as long as the product doesn't change. Togo, Western Africa, kind of a narrow strip. I've got a green box around it there on the uh, central map there. Uh, just so that strip in the middle is the uh, country's uh, landmass there. French language website do require local rep and test samples, but don't require label samples. And when I say label samples, this is supposed to, it can be a drawing, label drawing, or a mock up of what the label is going to look like with the correct markings on it so they know what to look for. This is basically for their importation that their customs agents know what the label is supposed to look like and so they can quickly identify whether it's approved or not. They accept EU reports. And uh, as with all the letter authorization for local rep, they either require local rep, they want some, whatever the process is. For example, in the United States, you would have it notarized, uh, local authorization, so whatever the equivalent is in those countries. Most of them have something like a notary uh, public, so uh, we'll do the uh, authorization for that, uh, certification for that letter. The certs are good for five years and the, about six to eight week uh, approval timeline after the agency receives all the documents that are requested. Burundi, Central Africa. It was Agency for Regulation Control of Telecommunications and its French language website. They require local rep but no test samples and uh, there's either FCC or CE label markings are accepted as proof of compliance when it comes through but you've got to have uh, you know, the approval and submittal that you've made for this with uh, the ARCT agency. There's no expiry date on the certs. Next we have Cameroon in Central Africa. So they have the Telecommunications Regulatory Board. They have both French and English versions of the website. Local reps required in country, but they don't require any samples. And they accept both FCC and EU, so either one. <clears throat> and certs are good for five years. The Central Africa Republic, uh, there's uh, this region in general, you know, near Sudan and some other areas, but uh, they've been having off and on uh, civil strife and military conflicts. Uh, for a long time, so that's kind of reflected. You see the population 115, but the GDP is 185. You can't, you know, it's hard to be real productive when you know, you've got a war going on. So, um, so one of the things you might want to look at too, kind of the indication and that, uh, that World Factbook can give you information on that too about what the uh, safety situation is in those countries and those kinds of things. There are agency website. Wasn't working when I was checking it a couple of days ago, but it should. And this is one of those, you know, also when you've got that kind of conflict, sometimes uh, telecommunications lines get cut, uh, power goes out, so uh, they don't have quite the infrastructure that, uh, you know, that we do here that we're used to with uh, always on uh, internet and, and phones, so sometimes they're not working. Their certs are good for five years, they'll take FCC or EU reports. Chad, uh, former name of the Republic of uh, T. Chad. I'm not I know how you pronounce that, but that's the official name of it. Uh, kind of in the middle of uh, uh, the northern part of Africa. French language website. Local rep and test samples are required, and uh, they'll accept either FCC or EU reports and docs. About six to eight week approval time. Certs are good for five years. Comoros is uh, one of uh, about four groups of islands that uh, are uh, independent countries off the coast of Africa. There's uh, National Regulatory Authority for Telecom, IT, and Communications is their agency to apply to. The website's in French. Local reps are required, but test samples aren't. And they'll accept either SEC or EU. And uh, typical six to eight week approval time. No expiry uh, date on the certs as long as the product doesn't change. Democratic, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo uh, is uh, there's two uh, there's the Republic of the Congo. You'll notice two different Congos on the CIA website. They uh, list them as uh, uh, 
under Congo. So you have sometimes you have to look around as Congo, comma, Democratic Republic of. Uh, so uh, if you're looking for those. And uh, you notice that they've got a, a GDP number that's higher than their uh, population number. Uh, I mean, the population 116, the other way around. So that kind of indicates the uh, conflict they've had in that region also. Central Africa has been kind of a uh, unstable area for a long time. So it's one of those things. They've got targeted party embargoes, so you can go. With this link here, I'm giving you the U.S. Department of Treasury sanctions program and country information. This page gives you a link to all the countries that are currently under sanctions. And you can go down and find you know, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and it'll have a PDF or a Word file that you can download and read what those specific uh, requirements are, who these targeted parties are within the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and uh, control over dual use. Once again, that's anything that has a civilian use and a military use, or could be used for military use uh, that are banned from being imported there. You know, French language website, they require local reps, labels, and test samples and uh, they'll accept either FCC or EU. Their certs are good for 10 years, takes about six to eight weeks to get that once the agency has all the required materials. Gabon is on the coast of Central Africa and uh, have French language website at RCEP. Uh, local rep and, and test samples are required and they'll accept either FCC or C reports. Their search is only good for two years, so if your product's still on the market after two years and you intend to keep selling it, you've got to go back for an updated certificate. Equatorial Guinea is in Central Africa. Their agency is Ortel and uh, English language website, but it wasn't functioning when I checked it a couple of days ago, but you keep that URL and at some point it'll be back up. This is and when you're dealing with some of these African countries, that's just a uh, normal occurrence. Uh, either power's gone out of the country or part of the country, or they only have power on. You know, maybe if I had checked in the morning instead of the afternoon, I would have found it. So uh, there's things like that you have to take in consideration. You'll notice this uh, country, in those small country, the population 164, but its GDP is higher than its population, which means they're a very productive nation as far as so they may have re uh, mineral resources and. Uh, other uh, uh, produce, uh, other things that are bringing in a lot of money for them. They'll accept either FCC or CU and typical six to eight weeks for their two year certificates. And here's the other Congo, Republic of the Congo. So the other one's Democratic Republic of the Congo. So you can see there's just one word difference and it's easy to get confused. But uh, they're doing a little bit better than the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You remember their GDP was way down compared to their population. These are pretty close. so. Uh, maybe a better environment for uh, business if you've got a product you're trying to take worldwide. French language website, they do require local reps. Don't require test samples or te uh, label samples. They'll accept either FC or CU. There's no expiry date on their certificates. Rwanda in Central Africa. Uh, has had a, a lot of uh, conflict over the years. You know, it's reflected in their population number compared to their GDP. You know, so uh, uh, it's one of those that a local rep is required, and uh, I would highly recommend you utilize them for knowing, uh, uh, you know, the conditions in the country and what's going on and making sure it's a good environment for your products. No expiry date in CERT, six to eight week approval time, and it'll set either FCC or EU reports and docs. Tanzania, Central Africa has an English language website and the Tanzania Communications Regulatory Authority, the agency there, uh, they do require, uh, don't require either, uh, local reps or test samples or labels. And they'll accept either EU or SEC test reports and certs, no expiry date on the products, and like most agencies, six to eight week approval time after they received all the materials. Uganda. As uh, in Central Africa, they have a uh, English language website and you know, some of the good information. They have uh, no requirement for test samples or labels or a local rep. But uh, as in most of the countries, if you don't have an actual presence in your company there, local reps are always a good thing to have just to make sure that things are getting delivered the right way and they can go clear things out of customs if they get it, uh, held up in the shipment and things like this. About a six to ten week of approval time. No expiry date on the certs. Ethiopia, uh, agencies 
Ethio Telecom. This is a change from uh, what it was recently, and they also have a Ministry of Communication Information Technology, which is over the uh, Ethio Telecom, and uh, they outsource that Telecom Authority is actually an outsource. But I think it's a Chinese company now, and uh, but their Ministry website wasn't functioning when I checked it a few days ago, but normally it is. Standard conformity, they'll take either FCC or EU reports and docs. They don't require local rep test samples or labels. Kenya, this is when I was uh, telling you is the you know, 30th uh, largest population world. So there is a large market there. Uh, GDP isn't uh, all that great, but it's not all that bad either. 75 is not a bad number. Uh, anything in the top 100 is a pretty good uh, number. Uh, they have the Communication Authority of Kenya. English language website. They do require local reps and test samples, but no label samples. And they'll accept either SEC or EU. There's no expiry date. And uh, if you notice down here, let's note uh, cert certification is granted in two size stages. First, a provisional type one certificate uh, will be sent to you, followed by a final approval certificate. But you can start shipment uh, with that type one certificate. But you've got to complete the process and get the final one. Somalia, uh, this is the uh, country that the movie Black Hawk Down was about. It's uh, on the, the literal horn of Africa on the east coast. Uh, and this uh, has been a region of conflict for centuries, dating back to you know pirates in the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, was a popular area for them uh, because of that uh, narrow gap there. And uh, it's targeted parties in country, so there's they want to make sure that uh, things aren't going to the warlords and the people that are creating the civil strife and military actions. Uh, they can go to the U.S. Department of Treasury website that I've given you here for the sanctions programs and country information to give you more specifics on that. And basically what they're going to tell you is the, uh, the restriction you have to have on shipment. You have to make sure they're going to authorize you know, importers, and those importers can be tracked to make sure they're delivering products to uh, the people that are authorized to buy them, and nobody on that uh, uh, target parties is getting any of this or can get any of this. Uh, Telecom Authority is Ministry of Post and, and Communications. That's their emblem there. And they've got an English language website. Local rep is required. And uh, even if it wasn't, you would definitely want uh, to have a local rep there in a country uh, like that. And uh, well, But it kind of gives you an indication. This may be a country you want to think about. If the population is 83, but the GDP is in 177, the people probably don't have a lot of support. Spare cash for consumer goods. So uh, it's just something to consider when you're trying to decide which countries you're going to import to make sure that the uh, revenue you earn is going to pay for the cost of doing business there. Except either FCC or EU, and uh, six to eight weeks, so there have been delays from time to time when the conflict breaks out. There's no expiry date in search as long as the product doesn't change. Angola has uh, been in a region historically has had a lot of conflict, but they've uh, really been on the upspring, uh, upswing lately economically. If you know, its population is 46 in the world, and their GDP is 65, which is nothing to uh, look down upon as a good uh, producing economy. Institute of Communications is their agency, a Portuguese language website. They also have a ministry that's over that agency, Ministry of Telecom and IT. And, uh, Local reps required, test samples aren't required. They'll accept either FCC and EU reports and certs and markings. No expiry date in the certs and the typical six to eight week approval timeline once the agency receives everything. Botswana, Southern Africa, and once again, they're making a distinction between South Africa, the country, and Southern Africa, the region of uh, the continent that's in the south. And these are all just relative terms when I'm talking about Western, Northern, Eastern, because uh, it's not a regularly shaped continent, you know, landmass. So it's kind of relative what one person may call Central Area, Central uh, Africa, somebody else might call West Africa or, or Southern Africa, depending on the situation. Uh, the agency website is in French or Arabic, and the local rep and labels are required, but test samples are not. They'll accept either the FCC or the EU reports and docs. Certs are good for five years and takes about six to eight weeks to uh, complete once the agency has all the materials. So as all with these approval lead times, these don't take into account, you know, shipping or however you're getting those products to there. Well, with a lot of them, you can do, uh, you know, uh, through email or, or they'll have a portal where you can upload documents so there's no physical bailing uh, of, of, like, reports if that's all they require. 
but if you do have to send uh, test samples, uh, then uh, physical samples, and those are going to have to go through. You need to make sure that you're set up for importing test samples, uh, and that's what another good use for the local rep is to make sure they're going to get in the country and get to the test places they need to. The SOTHO is in southern Africa. It used to be a part of South Africa, the country, and uh, they've got a French or Arabic version of the website. Local rep is required in country, but they don't require any kind of samples of the product or labels. And they'll accept both the SEC and EU, uh, your choice. No expired date inserts and typically six to eight week uh, approval timeline at the agency. Madagascar, uh, it's my, one of my grandson's favorite movies. And uh, we're not talking about the movie. We're talking about the country. And this is the island nation off the uh, south uh, east coast of Africa continent. And it is a pretty large island, uh, larger than uh, some states in our country. And uh, they have a French language website. Now, the OMERT is the domain name. Uh, MG is the uh, country domain name for Madagascar. But OMERT was a previous agency. But as you'll notice with some of these agencies, uh, they didn't bother uh, getting a new URL for their agency. They just used the old one and changed the name on it and the logo. So the logo used to be the OMERT, but now it's the Artec. I do require in country local reps and. Uh, They'll accept either SEC or CE. No expiry date in the certs as long as the product doesn't change. Malawi is in southern Africa. It's not a very big country. Uh, does have a lot of, uh, you know, 61 population for such a tiny country. It's inside that square block. There's a little bit of green along that lake there. Uh, so uh, English language website don't uh, require test samples, but they do require a local rep. And they'll accept either SEC or EE reports and docs as proof of compliance, no expiry date inserts, and typically six to eight-week approval timeline. Marathios is in, uh, island, another group of islands off the coast, southeast coast of uh, Africa. So it's just uh, east of Madagascar. And it's inside that square block. There's a bunch of islands. And they have the Information and Communications Technology Authority, or ICTA, is an English language website. They do require a local rep, but they don't require any samples, and they'll accept either the SEC or EU uh, red reports and docs as proof of compliance. And uh, about six to eight week approval timeline, no expiry date, and certify anything that communicates data or voice uh, wirelessly or over hardwired. Mozambique in southern Africa has had some uh, conflict in the past. They seem to be Stabilizing some, but their economy still has a way to go to recover. You know, it's the 50th uh, largest population on the planet for that country. And uh, National Institute of Communications, uh, it's a Portuguese website. You know, and you'll notice on some of these, the uh, name I give doesn't match up to the acronym because that's the acronym in Portuguese or French or whatever the case may be. And the word order is different in those languages. And so I'm trying to make it easier to read as an English speaker. Local rep is required in country, test samples aren't, and they'll accept either FCC or CE. No expiry date in the certs as long as it doesn't change. Six to eight week approval timeline. Namibia is in Southern Africa. The Communication Regulatory Authority of uh, Namibia is a uh, pretty well established English language website. They require label samples, but don't require local reps or, or physical product samples. They'll accept either the FCC or EU reports and certs and no expiry date on the certs. Seychelles is in uh, another island nation. This is one of the four I was telling you that's off the coast of Africa. Three of them are off of the north, uh, I mean the southeast coast, the one's off the northwest coast. But the uh, Telecom Authority is Department of Information and Communications Technology, English language website. This is voluntary marketing requirement. Remember, I said this is basically a customer requirement. If it's a government agency you're selling to, they may require it. If it's a uh, large corporation that happens to be there, they may require it. But uh, it's not legally required to import the product. It just could be a, you know, like in the, a customer bid, they may say we want this uh, ICT or the ICT approval. They'll accept either FCC or EU. No expiry date on the certs. Six to eight week typical approval timeline. Now, South Africa has the most well-developed uh, 
uh, program uh, compliance programs in in, the, in this continent. As I mentioned, they do have EMC and product safety requirements that fall into the South African Bureau of Standards, uh, but we were just concentrating on telecom and wireless today. And um, they have an English language website, uh, same with SOBS. If you just um, search on sabs.com, uh, you'll probably find the website. Um, their shield, uh, this is uh, supposed to symbolize a shield here, uh, going back to the history of South Africa, so that's for the natives. And, um, Indigenous tribes that uh, were there. Local red and labels are required. Test samples not required. They'll accept either FCC or EU. Six to eight weeks on the search, no expiry date. Once again, that caveat that that uh, uh, was, assumes no product changes. Product changes, you've got to reapply for approval. And uh, this acronym is usually pronounced ICASA, but it's I C A A S A. So the application forms and account setup are required. So previous to submitting your first product, you've got to uh, have an account set up with them for billing and, and uh, uh, tracking purposes. And uh, you know, it's a pretty good economy here, 25th world's largest population, 31 for GDP, so that's, that's a pretty good solid economically uh, uh, kind of uh, picture there. So Swaziland was also, used to be part of South Africa and uh, it's broken out. It's got its own uh, agency, Swaziland Post and Telecommunications Corporation. English language website don't require local reps or labels, and test samples are only for uh, required for telecom, the hardwired TTE equipment, except either FCC or CE reports. No expiry date on the certs. And getting to the end here with Zambia and uh, on Southern Africa, it's the English language website. Local rep is required. Label samples, test samples aren't required, and the standards for proof of conformity are either the FCC or EU reports and docs. Six to eight week approval timeline and no expiry date on the certs. Zimbabwe is a, a embargo targeted parties in the country. And if you haven't ever dealt with that before, I'd recommend you go to the US Treasury website, check it out. There's a lot of good information there for import export, which is coming outside the uh, uh, normal duties of a compliance engineer, but it's something your company needs to know, especially if you're a smaller company or your startup and you haven't dealt with this before to make sure you know what those regulations are. Um, they have the po uh, Postal and Telecom Agency, POTRAS, and uh, English language website. Don't require local reps or test samples or label samples. They'll accept either FCC or EU uh, reports and certs, six to 10 weeks. On the approval timeline, uh, no expiry date. They tend to get backed up around you know the typical busy times of the year prior to the uh, start of uh, school season and uh, uh, you know the holiday season stuff like that. And so that brings us up to the end of 51 countries in Africa. So when dealing with this region, you should always expect new and updated regulatory requirements. Don't assume it's like it was, you know, last year or last month. You go back to the website, check their standard, check to see if you're still in compliance, check to see if the agency has changed, check to see if the government's changed. Um, so especially for new and wireless and telecom technologies, they're going to be lagging behind in most cases behind where, for example, the EU or the U.S. regulations are at. So these are in the developing market countries that are you know, recovering from conflict and trying to rebuild their economies and rebuild their infrastructure. Uh, these regulatory systems will be developing also, so they're not going to be you know, as fast and responsive as you may be used to with the FCC, where you go website and do everything, and submit and check status and all that. It's not going to work like that uh, in a lot of cases. So even in places that don't require a local rep, that's why it's good to have one, somebody who can go to the agency's office and you know, bug them about your uh, approvals or find a, uh, a company that can facilitate that for you that handles worldwide approvals. Um, so, you know, that's what the fighting knowledgeable experienced partners are crucial to success for, for this stuff too. And uh, political and social instability prevents challenges also. It may not always be safe to travel there. It may not always be safe uh, to send your products in there because you don't know what, you know, what's happening in the ports or what, you know, is, is it uh, actually going to make it to the intended customers. So make sure you're, you're weighing this out and not just that your marketing guy's all excited and saying he's going to go worldwide. You're going to go to 230 something countries, but you're going to, you know, uh, 
lose all your money on half those countries where you're not going to get a return on your investment. So make sure that it makes sense. So one of the things I recommend is this list of African countries by GDP. The Wikipedia has a list of that, which is a good thing to check. But, um, you know, and as I mentioned, always check your domain names. Uh, example given here is .eg is Egypt's domain name. And, and uh, you know, there's a, uh, for the other countries, they'll have an official list uh, listing of those. So make sure you're uh, you're on the actual country you want to be on. Okay, I'll open it up for uh, questions now. Let me go check and see what we've got on chat. Or um, look, I've got a few things in here. So uh, Monica Fuller has one. I'm going to read here. For most countries in Africa, the electronic products such as Industrial equipment not containing any radios, assumption they are completely covered by Red FCC completely, where they also need some additional certification process. Well, that can depend on the country. As I mentioned, that today's uh, I was uh, mainly talking about uh, wireless and telecom approvals. If they are uh, just industrial, they may not have any requirements, um, or they may fall under, and maybe they'll accept CB ski reports as uh, safety reports for proof of compliance. It's going to depend on the country. Um, so if they don't have wireless, they're not falling under the agencies I was talking about today. If there's no wireless function or telecom function, such as a, a modem type that would like uh, automatically call for an error and report in or something like that. But if it doesn't have that, uh, then, oh, I see here Monica's corrected question. Um, yeah, so it's going to depend on the country. Most countries won't require any additional EMC or product safety. Um, type of uh, uh, coverage, but uh, uh, it depends on the country. For South Africa, definitely, you're going to have to have EMC and product safety requirements. For Egypt, there's product safety requirements. So in those cases, you're going to need to make sure you have the additional reports that are needed. If you do have any additional questions and you didn't uh, feel like asking today, you can always email me at markm at wll.com. And if you have a product uh, project coming up, uh, you're working on and you need, uh, uh, you know, international approvals or uh, North America approvals or Europe or whatever, contact us at info at WLL.com and somebody will get back with you within 24 hours to uh, start working on a quote for you. There's also a direct phone line to the office. It's located just outside of Washington, D.C. And our website, www.wll.com. I also want to remind you that we have uh, upcoming uh, international approval webinars in 2018, in addition to uh, the other ones we've been giving. Each month we're going to have a free international approval webinar. And uh, January 11th is going to be Russia and the Eurasian Economic Union compliance. Uh, the EEU is something that Russia has started a while back to try to compete with the EU. And then uh, February 8th, uh, I have extra EU in there, but EU new legislative directions and compliance. So we're going to be talking about the uh, new uh, EMC directive, the low voltage directive, and the radio equipment directive uh, at a, a higher level because we're going to be covering all three of them. But uh, we'll be talking about that and what the new legislative directive was that uh, uh, was driving all those new standards. Then March 8th, we'll have one India product compliance. You can see the rest of the 2018 listings at our Academy uh, website at WLL.com slash US slash Academy. Uh, thank you for your time today. As I said, if you've got any additional questions you want to follow up with, be sure to contact me. Or uh, if you've got product questions, compliance questions, uh, please send your information to info.com or you can send it to me and we'll uh, get a conversation going and see how we can help you. Thank you for your time today. The recording will be sent out within a few days. Uh, uh, via a link and uh, in an email. And so until next month, uh, I hope you all have a happy holidays and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and everything else, and get all you need. Uh, spend some time with your families and some time off work and kind of regroup for the new year. Thank you.